Hey, what's up everyone? Paul from Great House Fun House and welcome to my latest collection update video. This one covers February and March of 2021. I got the VHSs, I got the DVDs, I got the Blu-rays, I got the vinyl soundtracks. You know how I do. And uh, so let's start it right up with the VHSs. I got two. And as you know, when it comes to VHS, I only get the ones that have remained only on VHS for all these years. Uh, the first one being Enemy Territory, which came out in 87, starring Jan Michael Vinson, Tony Todd, and Ray Parker Jr. I did a whole review on it. In fact, it's the video I uploaded right before this one, so go get me a few more views, why don't ya? Uh, this is a pretty solid, it all happened in one night, we're stuck in the hood movie that I hope gets picked up soon for a Blu-ray release when someone figures out those music rights issues. And then I bought this one at the same time as uh, Enemy Territory and it is a Corey movie, the Corey who is Canadian and that's Mr. Haim in Dream Machine. I have yet to see this one. I've heard somewhat good things. We've seen Corey Haim in a car movie before. So based on that fact alone, I have a good feeling about this one. Prove me right, Dream Machine. Prove me right up next the dvds i got two multiple film set sets and two movies starring most excellent black action movie stars so to take advantage of the set shipping prices vinegar syndrome offers when you order from them uh, i decided to pick this up this double feature dvd so as to make it worth my while when i order another title that i'll show you a bit later and it is uh, the double feature of Dead Force and Vampire Hookers. Uh, both movies were directed by Sirio H. Santiago, uh, one of the best B-movie directors from the, the 70s and 80s. Uh, Dead Force is kind of like a black exploitation kung fu movie. And as you can see, I'm really into black exploitation films. So this is another title to add to my collection. We have yet to see. And then Vampire Hookers uh, stars John Carradine uh, late in his career. And uh, there's also Bruce Fairbairn, who was in the very first movie I've ever reviewed in my life. And it is Nightstick, uh, which I reviewed a couple years ago. You could look it up if you want to or not, because <laughs> that was at my beginning. But um, yeah, I'm very curious to see... Uh, both movies uh, just from the artwork alone here they look quite excellent and then i got myself uh, the four film favorite urban action collection dvd of black Bat jones black samson hot potato three the hard way so all awesome black exploitation titles from the 70s wanting to buy this one for the longest time but what was holding me back was the hope uh, that they would each get a Blu-ray release uh, this dvd came out 11 years ago so you would have thought by now at least one or two movies from this set would have gotten a release from Warner Archive, but uh, no such luck. Uh, maybe now that I bought it, we'll get release announcement for all four <laughs> in the coming months. Uh, this wouldn't surprise me at all. I've already watched uh, Three the Hard Way. You know, Jim Brown, Fred Williamson, Jim Kelly, awesome trio. I know they did another movie right after this one. Oh fuck, I can't remember the title, but uh, I, I need to check it out as well. Uh, Black Samson looks cool as fuck, but I've yet to see it. Although I have the trailer on my channel. And uh, Hot Potato is the sequel to Black Bell Jones right here. So there you go. Another black exploitation movie I got was That Man Bolt. In 1973, Fred Williamson joint. It's from uh, released by uh, Universal Pictures, which I believe was his only big mainstream studio release in the 70s. Uh, this is like uh, his James Bond movie. If you want, if you will, uh, this was like shot in Hong Kong, and uh, it's quite the ladies' man, uh, you know, you know, uh, indestructible man, like he can do the toughest dude in the, on the block, you know, and um, I quite enjoy it. Although this this uh, <clears throat> this artwork does not do it justice. This is really some shitty Photoshop work here, but I'll show you the, the poster right here. But uh, yeah, I quite enjoyed. It. It's a shame he didn't get to do more. Uh, you didn't get to do sequels playing Jefferson Bolt is a uh, character's name in this. And then I got another black exploitation ish type uh, movie, although it's a late early 90s uh, action movie, black cinema, Carl Weathers. Uh, his last starring role before this movie was in the, in the 80s was 1988's Action Jackson. And then he went on to do a TV series in 1991 called Street Justice. And his next movie during that time 
was an Australian action movie that came out in 1992. Hurricane Smith, playing the title role, he plays an American oil field worker named Billy Hurricane Smith, who travels to Australia on a quest to rescue his sister, where he gets mixed up with drug smugglers. Uh, the bad guy in this is played by Jürgen Prognau. Um, I don't see this movie being talked a lot, a, a lot, talked about a lot. So even I, like I just um, discovered it on a just by going through his uh, filmography, I was like, oh, what's this? And uh, looks very interesting. I love the cover right here. Might get a, a you know a Blu-ray release soon. Who knows? But uh, I do plan on uh, possibly doing a review of this. I feel like it would be a really fun um, movie to do a review on. So yeah, there you go. That is it for uh, DVDs. And now it's on to Blu-rays. So I got uh, 11 Blu-rays, which uh, I'm kind of surprised by because I didn't remember buying this much. Uh, although two of those Blu-rays were birthday gifts I asked for from my mom. So thanks, mom. Uh, first one being Body Parts, uh, which is a 1991 horror movie starring um, <clears throat> Jeff Fahey, directed by Eric Red. Uh, 1991 is like my year, my cinematic year. That's where it all really started, my love of movies, like the, excessively. And I remember this movie coming out in July of 1991, towards the end of, and uh, it was rated 18, so uh, I couldn't see it. Although I don't think I was aware enough of those kind of movies to go see it. But uh, it, it, it always intrigued me. So when uh, Screen Factory decided to release it, I believe, is it earlier this year, or the, <clears throat> at the end of last year, uh, I picked it up. And uh, I cannot wait to check it out. And uh, I will and possibly do a review of it. Uh, but I uh, really like the premise of uh, uh, a dude getting into an accident and then gets body parts of... Uh, was it someone on death row? And then he comes back uh, through his body and starts killing people. And uh, that looks really good. So there you go. Uh, the other movie I asked my mom <laughs> to get me for my birthday is uh, Black Christmas. Classic 1974 movie. Bob Clark, Canadian horror and all that good stuff. So uh, I'm going to keep this one for next Christmas. There you go. And uh, one that I randomly purchased uh, on Amazon because I always check uh, the daily Blu-ray deals and I, and I came across those two. First one being Danger Diabolique, which uh, I've always wanted to see. I remember seeing the uh, body moving video in the 90s, 1998 uh, from the Beastie Boys. They were uh, doing an homage to this movie. So it's pretty much uh, uh, 1968, kind of like psychedelic uh, movie I go go, uh, you know, uh, in the same vein as Barbarella, which came out, uh, I think the same producers or they were like film one after the other. Actually, I, I believe John Philip Law was in Barbarella as well, but uh, he plays the main, uh, the main thief in this. Um, Basically, he's, uh, he steals pretty much like uh, <clears throat> like uh, jewelry for his girlfriend. He's very horny for his girlfriend. And for the first 20 minutes, it doesn't say a word. It's just him in his cat suit. Which you can see right here is a rubber, rubber suit. And um, it, clearly, this movie was uh, very influ influential for just the style of Alone. Uh, I remember that movie in the early 2000s. CQ was kind of like an homage to this movie as well from... Um, was it the Roman Coppola and stuff? But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really good. And there is, uh, as special features, an interview with uh, John Philip Law, who uh, sadly passed away, was it like five years ago? Also, the, the very hot uh, Marissa Mel, also no longer with us. But they will live forever in danger diabolique. And the other movie I picked up on Amazon is uh, Only Lovers Left Alive. Uh, Jim Jarmusch, uh, his vampire movie with uh, Tom Hiddleston, Mia Wachowska, Anto Yelchin, um, and uh, where am I missing? Tilda Swinson, of course. And it's it's pretty much like a, a mood movie, like a you know the not much happens in it, but they all look, they all look cool while doing stuff. It's it's I'd say it's one of my, uh, the better Jim Jarmusch movies out there. I really dug it. So there you go. Only lovers left alive. Finally, for the Blu-rays, uh, I got one from Vinegar Syndrome, which I bought at the same time as the uh, Vampire Hookers Dead Force DVD. 
uh, not during a sale, but just in normal times, which I never do since they are crazy expensive if not purchased through a sale. And it is uh, the ACFA Horror Trailer Show, which I did a full review of it uh, on my channel. It's, uh, it's kind of like a, a trailer compilation slash mixtape, as they try to call it, where they show um, uh, horror trailers from the 60s and 70s uh, mixed with uh, drive-in snipes which are the ads you see to go to like the concession stand, popcorn, drinks, burgers, stuff like that. And um, yeah, I really love, I love how they, they set it up, like the mixtape of it. A lot of the trailers I've seen, there's a few I hadn't, which, was, uh, rare, which is rare now, because I own so many trailer compilations. So I've seen a lot of trailers. So it was nice to actually uh, get to discover a few new ones, but uh, if you're interested, uh, there's still a lot of copies left. Maybe get one during the halfway to Black Friday sale, which will be next month from Vinegar Syndrome. It's uh, definitely worth a bot, a buy, a bot, a buy. And then uh, I got three from Ronan Flicks. Uh, uh, they had a flash sale earlier this month, and these three that I'm going to show you had my eyes on for at least a year, if not two, hoping the prices would uh, drop. But with Ronan Flicks, it never goes down below 30 for us Canadians. Although I remember a time like back in 2017 where I would buy from a sale of theirs, maybe a dozen titles that would come to about $17 each. Not the case now, but these three, I said, fuck it. I just wanted them uh, with the slip covers. Uh, so the time was now and it was my birthday. So I treated myself. So first up being uh, the Delta Force, Chuck Norris and... Uh, uh, Martin Balsam is in this and uh, Lee Marvin in his last movie role directed by Manhattan Manhattan Golan who was the who ran Canon Films uh, back in the 80s uh, God bless his soul uh, so yeah this is a two hour uh, you know movie uh, a plane being taken hostage and uh, Chuck Norris and Lee Marvin are called upon to uh, liberate them all and uh, it's a who's who of uh, 80s uh, character actor. We have uh, Martin Balsam, like I said, Robert Forster, who plays one of the, the, uh, the terrorists. Uh, we have George Kennedy in this, Bo Svensson, Robert Vaughn, Shelley Winters. So I uh, cannot wait to watch this again. And then I got another Chuck uh, with uh, David Carradine at his co-star. And it is Lone Wolf McQuaid. Uh, I've never seen this movie. But uh, it is uh, like a modern modern day Western, I believe. And uh, even Walker, Texas Ranger, apparently was kind of based on this. Kind of like stole the idea from this. And uh, as you know, this was a big hit for Chuck Norris in the 90s. But uh, yeah, can't wait to, to check it out. Here's the uh, alternative cover right here for Lone Wolf McQuaid. And uh, I've been on such a Chuck Norris kick lately that uh, cannot wait to check this one. I have... Um, Another uh, project of his in the 80s I'm working on a review of, and uh, I think you'll quite enjoy it. And then I got uh, The Daddy of Them All, classic canon movie, probably the best that, uh, that's ever been released, I would say, from canon. And uh, I, it is Dead Wish 3 right here, and uh, I will have to do a review of this. I've seen it so many times. Um, I'm just, uh, it's just batshit crazy. It's just a vigilante movie. Uh, it just does not give a fuck. Uh, Charles Bronson in this is just grizzled old, uh, curmudgeon and just shoot everybody on sight. Uh, it just, it's just a glorious, glorious movie. And, uh, for the special features, there's a brand new 2022 K scan. Uh, there's an interview with actor Kirk Taylor, the giggler. And uh, there's an audio commentary with uh, Paul Talbot, which is the author of Bronson Sluice book. So he knows his shit when it comes to Charles Bronson. And uh, can't wait to check this version out. So that is it for Blu-rays. Now on to vinyl soundtracks. I bought a lot of vinyl soundtracks in the last two months. Uh, half of them are part of two separate videos. Uh, one will be for my Verez Saraband collection overview, which I will be doing right after this video goes up. And I also want to do a hip hop soundtracks collection overview, which I want to have up before the end of April. So uh, be on the lookout for those. Uh, so here's what's left that I bought in the last two months. 
First one being Salvation, which stars um, Stephen McCarthy, Canadian actor, kind of looks like uh, Lawrence Herrickson. I think it's uh, from one, uh, I've never seen the movie, but I saw a review of uh, Siskel and Ebert. Uh, recently, it's kind of like a preacher movie, kind of like uh, happening in the South from my memory. <laughs> But I mostly got this because of what's uh, who's on this. And we have um, Cabaret Voltaire. We have New Order Cuts on this. And uh, yeah, that's about it. That's pretty good right there. So for a blind buy, not too bad. Then I got Inside Moves, which is a Richard Donner movie starring uh, John Savage, David Morse, and uh, Amy Wright. I know nothing of this movie. I know that um, Scorpion Releasing released this a couple of years ago. But uh, yeah, on this one, we have the spinners. We have Boz Skaggs. I got this because John Barry did the score, but he only has uh, two cues on this one. The, uh, the main theme and the love theme. So there you go. Inside moves. Then I got this one yesterday. It's sort of a black exploitation soundtrack, but not really because it came right before it came out right before this whole genre started. It came out in 1969 and it is The Lost Man, starring Sidney Poitier. And we have uh, Quincy Jones doing the, uh, the scoring. I mean, it's uh, Quincy Jones. So there you go. Just for that alone, it's, it's a must, it's a must own. And uh, I got this right there. And then uh, a soundtrack I've been ashamed of not having uh, on vinyl for all these years, although I do have it on cassette, my old cassette from back, from way, 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 way back. And it is Back to the Future, the uh, various artistes, you know, release with all the classics uh, from UA Lewis and the News, uh, Lindsay Buckingham. A uh, couple cues from uh, Alan Silvestri. No, not couple, just the one, you know. No, two. There's two, actually. Uh, I need to get the uh, the full... I want to get the uh, Mondo release, I believe, and then I'll get the Veres Saraban instrumental scoring version for two and three. So yeah, right there. Who, everyone needs Back to the Future in their collection, and it's in pretty good shape. It's, 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 but uh, someone wrote on my copy right here, and I'm not a fan of that, but you know, I didn't see it before I bought it. So there, that's what happens. And then one of the masters in the scoring game, uh, Jerry Goldsmith. Uh, is some of his best work was done for sci-fi movies. This one was for Outland, <clears throat> right here, which stars Sean Connery and Peter Boyle and uh, James B. Sicking, the dad in uh, Doogie Howser, MD, uh, directed by Peter Hyams. Uh, it's really, I've never, I'm not, I, I own the movie, I've yet to see it. The score is pretty excellent. Someone did a, a bad thing here, not a, like, like they did a cut sleeve here, not a fan, but uh, <clears throat> from his scoring days, this is one of the, his better one, I do believe, and uh, I really enjoyed it. And then finally, I really treated myself with this one, and it's one that uh, uh, went and went on sale. I found out literally the day after that it was sold out. This was released by um, Quartet Records in the UK, and it is... Total Recall, the 30th anniversary edition. It is a glorious release. Uh, my favorite for, uh, release for uh, 2020. Uh, I was gonna do an unboxing of this, just showing everything inside all the discs and uh, the inserts, but uh, my buddy Neil from Retro Reels, Retro Reels did a, a great unboxing. I will leave the link in the description below. We're checking out. But uh, this composed of um, all the score cues that were done for the movie um, that was released on CD uh, uh, in the mid 2010s, I want to say. I'm not quite sure, but it's all on here. And they even give you on the third disc the original 1990 album released by Varez Saraband that is crazy expensive. And it's really nice that they, uh, you know, gave you that option on the album. So if I never get a chance to buy, you know, the original release, the original 1990 release. Look at this right here. Well, at least I have it in this form. So uh, yeah, that was a, uh, an amazing release and uh, it's, it's totally sold out. Only a thousand were pressed. So uh, really happy I got to uh, get my hands 
on this copy right here. And uh, you know what? That is it. That is it for this collection update for February, March 2021. Please like, share and subscribe. Check me out on Instagram, Reddit and on Facebook. In the comment section below, let me know about uh, things and stuff like uh, how was your day or what will you be having for dinner this evening? I need to know. <laughs> uh, there's been a few sales happening at my store and I thank you for that. Uh, shout out to Mike from All We Need Is Sleeves who got himself the 40 Second Street shirt. Uh, looks mighty good on him. Uh, Y'all should check out All We Need Is Sleeves where they host live interactive watch parties uh, showing all the cult horror and exploitation movie classics. Their last lineup of films included Vigilante, Maniac Across 110th Street, Night of the Juggler, and uh, Fleshpot of 42nd Street. Hell of a lineup. This awesome Chef Big Score shirt I'm wearing right now is available in the store. I got two more shirts that should be up in the coming week that I think you'll dig. So go check the store out and buy to your heart's content. More videos coming up soon. As always, reviews, uh, collection overviews, and my first live stream. I've learned how to do it. Should be fun times. Tune in to potentially see me flaming out or see me shine. I feel like it's going to be an either or situation. I want this to happen randomly one night in April. I'll announce it on Instagram and on the Facebook group. And I would love for y'all to show up. So that's it. Thank you for watching. And I'll say to you, ciao bye for now.